What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. All right. I think we are all set. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the first live show of Underground Sports Philadelphia here in 2023. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, it is episode number 496. KB and Matt coming at you from Underground Studios. We got a lot to dive into from the Birds, the Phils, the Sixers, uh, and a whole bunch of other things as well. But before we get started... Make sure you guys are following us on the socials at Underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Underground Sports PHI. Uh, you can follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. You can follow me at KBIZZL311. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, and leave those five star ratings and reviews. It goes a long way for helping the show continue to grow. And uh, as we are now in year five of Underground, just a month away from the actual anniversary, but we want to take this thing to new heights, so subscribe to the podcast feed, be a friend, tell a friend to subscribe as well, and subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel, that's where you get full video episodes of every single podcast on our network, you get live streams, original content, we got some big projects upcoming in 2023 that'll be exclusively on our youtube channel that you won't want to miss so it's just go subscribe youtube.com slash at underground sports philadelphia we're at 351 subscribers right now still on that road to 1k still trying to hit that 1000 subscriber mark uh so go subscribe to the youtube youtube.com slash at underground sports philadelphia Big shout out to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. And of course, guys, go get your merch. It's the most effective and direct way to support everything we're doing here at Underground with our awesome merch partners, PHI Apparel Company. There's no doubt that you guys are going to stand out when you're going to the Link, the Wells Fargo Center, Xfinity Live, Subaru Park, Citizens Bank Park. Wherever you may be watching your favorite Philly sports teams when you're rocking your merch from PHI Apparel Company. It's the home of all of our exclusive Underground Sports Philadelphia merch. It's the only place you can get it. Uh, and when you guys go to phiapparel.co and use code UNDERGROUND, you get 10% off any and all merch orders uh, when you shop at phiapparel.co. And by the time you guys are listening to this, if you're not listening live, if you're listening on the pod or watching on YouTube... Uh, hoodies, hoodie capsule will be live on Thursday. So go get your hoodies, go get your merch, phiapparel.co. Use code underground for 10% off your order. What's going on, man? Living the dream. We have made it to another year, heading into year five of us doing this thing. It's absolutely insane, and we are prepping for another Eagles postseason run. As two key Eagles uh, got their practice windows activated today. C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Robert Quinn, two big-time acquisitions. Hopefully Robert Quinn can contribute more in the postseason than what we were able to see from him post-trade deadline. Uh, but C.J. Gardner-Johnson coming back is going to be huge, especially with Avante Maddox you know, out indefinitely. Uh, but a limited participant in practice today was none other than QB1 MVP candidate Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Which is uh, which is impressive. So, gonna need it uh, after that debacle that was the Saints game on New Year's Day. Uh, Eagles still looking to clinch uh, the division, the number one seed. Gonna have to play some starters on Sunday against the Giants, as will the Cowboys. Uh, so we'll be monitoring that game. Eagles game now kicks off at 4:25 Eastern on CBS uh, against the Giants, who have nothing to play for and don't know if it was a uh, regime thing with Joe Judge, or if it's an organizational thing, but if the Giants are men of their word, they'll be playing all of their starters. Right. Um, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> be surprised if they do. Um, yeah, I think it's a little frustrating that it's it's going to take to this last week now, and 
Um, it would be deeply ironic if the Giants are the one to kind of spoil the party, uh, considering that it was two years ago now. Yeah. Um, that'd be very funny, I think, <laughs> in a cosmic sort of sense. I have a f- weird suspicion that the Darius Slayton, where's Jalen Hurts tweet will be getting retweeted quite a bit yeah. uh, this weekend. But, I mean, you get you, you should be able to win this game. Granted, we said that against Dallas. We said that against the Saints. And I think, to be quite honest, like watching that Saints game, it seemed like everybody on the Eagles, especially after the Josh Sweat injury, was just like, okay, that kind of took some wind out of the sails. But it also seemed like they took that game for granted almost and felt like the Saints were just going to like bow down to them. Um, so that was unfortunate. But I'd much rather like that get out of their systems now. And then you go into this Week 18 Hopefully, you know, divisional game, division rival, um, you, you have some juice and you still have something to play for. You got to get that one seed. Yeah. Um, it's You know, the last three weeks it's felt like we've been saying, well, you know, they'll, they'll wrap up the one seed and they'll, they'll wrap up the division. Um, it's kind of stunning when you consider that this team is still being chased by 49ers and the Cowboys. Um, so I said this last week, but, you know, you expect that they could beat the Giants. Um Really, Gardner Minshew in, in that Saints game, too, I think, had a, a real collapse. You know, you don't want to blame him too much for the Cowboys' loss, but when you turn the ball over as much as you do, that is definitely a a tough one to come back from. And they, I thought he was flat-out terrible against New Orleans. I, I thought that was a really, really bad performance by him. Um, outside of that, you know, I, I think the team played pretty well still. But, you know, I, the injuries are kind of piling up at the wrong time of the year, too. You know, you have Josh Sweat. Uh, dealing with injury like Lane Johnson's going to play in the playoffs but you could tell Lane Johnson was out in that Saints game too right exactly like and it's you know it's one thing to have injuries it's one thing to have like some of your key positions get injured at this time of year yeah I think that's the frustrating part and so much of the NFL comes down to who stays the most healthy Mm -hmm. and you know if, if you look at Super Bowl winners over the last few years even longer than that but you know, it's just the teams that don't have the catastrophic injuries. Yeah. You know, look at the difference between, and there there are other reasons, but look at the difference between the Rams this year and last year, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're having all these injury problems. The Buccaneers, you know, the the Super Bowl they win, they're one of the healthiest teams in the league. And and you know, you see what happens when you have devastating offensive line injuries, right, to start your year for both of those teams. Like, health is the most underappreciated part because it's so fickle, especially in the NFL. Like, you're guaranteed to get hurt at some point in the year, it's just whether or not you can play through it and, you know, when those injuries fall for you. You know, it's just like, can you get super unlucky, which the Eagles have gotten a little unlucky the, the last few weeks now. Yes, yeah, so we'll see, you know, how everything piles up against the Giants and if Jalen Hurts – do you play Jalen Hurts this week? I th- I think if so he's, tough. like, if he's, if he's ready, like, if he's actually, like, practicing, you know, last week it felt like there was some smoke that he was out there throwing again and, and feeling good. Um if he's like legitimately ready to go, I th- I think you you play him. Um, you know it, it it would depend a lot on like the you know, we we obviously don't have any answer to this, but like the probability of like re-injury or mm-hmm. like some more like re-aggravation or something right. like that. Like it would depend a lot for me on that probability. Um, but I mean you can't underestimate either just like having that first round by how important that is because that's also guaranteeing another week of rest now for other guys yeah. that you're hoping for. You know I'm sure again Lane Johnson's gonna have a hell of a time playing with a torn abdomen <laughs> or whatever. But like <laughs> I'd imagine another week might feel kind of nice to to get that rested, right? Did like, you see that video that I don't know if it was like resurfaced or came out this week about Lane Johnson's foot in 2020, where he like outside this his foot was like the size of like a, a fully inflated like whoopee cushion. These people are built. Just, oh, it's like uh, Lane different. is just ridiculous. I'm going to see if I can find that um, while we keep this going. But, like, yeah, I mean, Josh Sweat says he's going to be back this this season in the postseason because um, that was kind of also a scary scene. And, you know, nothing, hopefully, will, will be scarier than what we saw on Monday night, which was just, you know, a horrific scene with DeMar Hamlin and, you know, positive updates keep coming through which is incredible um but man like i in our lifetime i can't remember anything like that outside of the one thing that came to mind was the one soccer player yeah christian erickson yeah um and that's happened with a a few soccer players too where it's such a cardio intensive sport too where if you have just like the slightest 
heart problem. It can you could just get very unlucky and something like that. But yeah, Christian Eriksen was definitely the one because that was pretty recent too. That was mm-hmm. at Euro twenty twenty, which was actually summer of twenty twenty one. Um, suffered a, a cardiac arrest on the field and you know had to be revived and you know it, I think it's it's scary too because you know it's so random and it's it's such a, a hard thing in both situations really any anytime you see this it's such a uh, I don't know how do you prevent <laughs> something like this you don't really you know um, it's it's just uh, it's just a, a freak kind of accident and uh, it is good to hear, though, that like there's definitely it seems like it's trending in the positive direction. But, um, yeah, I think something like this, too, like we've seen the NFL, unfortunately, too, like other like really catastrophic injuries, guys with like really bad back injuries and things like that. Um, I can remember when we were younger, I don't remember the Bills player, but I remember there's a Bills player that got a really bad back injury like during a game. Like those are typically what you think of when you think of, you know, uh, like Ryan Shazier, like recent history, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um those are typically what you think of when you think of these like big, you know, kind of like scary scenes. Um, but yeah, so obviously hope that, that he continues. Oh, Kevin to, Everett. Yeah. Um, and I, you just, you just hope that continues to improve. Cause um, it, it, I mean, also too, like it just puts this kind of cloud around everything too, you know, like where you're at the end of the season. And um, I think it's, it's tough too, cause it was such an anticipated game. Yeah. And it just, it, it feels so uh, it's like such a shift. Yeah, it feels so sudden. Like you're the anticipation of like this game and like the implications that it had on on the playoffs and you know kind of thinking about like what the next few weeks are gonna look like with both these teams and seating. And now it's like your know, your your viewpoint is so shifted and your mood is so shifted. It's very very dramatic. So I hope uh, I hope he continues to improve. But it's it's shocking. Yeah, and I mean shout out to Zach Taylor and uh, Sean McDermott too for. Just saying, yeah, we're not going to keep playing this game because the alleged, you know, rumor that the NFL was going to be like, yeah, you have five minute warm up period is it's it's not surprising, but it is asinine. Um, like, I wasn't shocked when I saw that happen, but I was very disappointed. Yeah, I, it's so to say, like, what's fact and fiction, right. you know, and like, I think sometimes things can be lost in like translation mm-hmm. too. Like, it's hard to say if, like, they were talking about that warm-up period as in, you know, like, we're thinking about getting into, like, warm-up if we are. Like, it, I, yeah. I don't know. Like, there's just no way to ever really know. Ultimately, the right thing was done. Correct. Which is truly what matters. Like, in that, you know, the game was postponed. And, I mean, it's still up in the air. Like, what exactly? I mean, we're sitting here Wednesday night and not sure when, if this game is going to be played. So, that's confusing. It's tough, too, because, you know, like, outside of the obvious, like, traumatic situation there is like real implications to this too like within the league and within the sport like you know how, how do you settle this game and this situation now like i think it's it's a really tough thing and i i think there's no perfect or right answer or an answer that's not going to like affect someone negatively unfortunately too so it's just uh all around a really just bad situation uh, and just the mental implications too on those players absolutely that, like, like i i think people too they're like being critical of like the players and everyone for not wanting to play i don't know how you could possibly no. play a game after that like even when guys get like just a really bad like normal injury right when they just like tear an acl or something or, or break a leg like you know it's still tough to like recover from that um something so severe like that you know we're like someone's having to be resuscitated on the field is just such a different I wouldn't expect anyone in any situation to ever be able to just like go back to their job right away, you know, because that's ultimately what it is to these guys, you know, whatever it is, a game, but still like asking them to like return and be like, well, just get on with it. You know, it's like, I don't, uh, you know, I don't blame any of them for, for wanting to, to walk away from the game and, and that their heads were elsewhere too. Like, I don't know. I just, it's tough. And kudos to the entire like ESPN, like in front of camera crew, like, during the broadcast when everything was going on from, you know, Booger McFarland to Schefter, Susie Colbert, Lisa Salters, uh, you know, Scott Van Pelt, Ryan Clark. Like, Ryan Clark was brilliant. And, like, I don't think there could have been a better person for such a, like, unmitigated circumstance to be around at ESPN Studios than Ryan Clark because he dealt with, you know, being in the hospital and not knowing if he was going to be able to walk again and, and stuff like that with injuries he's had. And I think the way he, you know, took on the situation from a broadcast perspective to give people insight, to give people 
the former player, you know, aspect of things was just brilliant. Um, so kudos to all of them for, you know, being forced into a situation that I don't think any broadcaster would be readily prepared for. Um, and including like Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, like it, it was, you know, tip of the cap type of night with, with the way that they were able to handle that on such a, a quick whim. Um, did you see the clip from Undisputed today? I did not. I don't watch the Undisputed. Neither clips do I because uh, just not. It got my sent to me. Of, uh, um, I don't think that show is going to be around much longer. Shannon Sharp all was. It's all scripted. It's, oh, a hundred percent. And I, I know that for a fact. Um, but Shannon Sharp was. You know why? Because everyone's going to talk about how there's no way this show continues. Yeah. I, I haven't even seen the clip, so you know I don't know the context. But like that's what I've seen people say. It's like I don't know how this goes on, and it's like. Now everyone's gonna have to tune in tomorrow. And be like, I can't wait to see how this develops. This, it's all. The thing with like all of this stuff, all this like negative stuff on social media, like all the bad characters and bad actors and stuff, um, it's all for a reason because people engage more with content mm-hmm. that upsets them and makes them mad than <laughs> than totally. they do with things that they enjoy. That's why these shows are so successful. Yeah. That's why Stephen A. Smith is so successful, right? Because like he goes on, he just does these soliloquies. People get mad and like pick it apart and like 300 people would reply to something to correct someone or say that this is a dumb opinion. Then, you know, whoever would reply and say, hey, I really liked this. Like what you said was really good. Like, it, I don't know. It's just... Yeah, it was... To me, it was pretty shocking and different from what i'm used to seeing from shannon sharp because i i genuinely think he's like pretty solid at the whole tv thing but uh, there's been a lot of speculation on why i wasn't on here yesterday and i won't get into speculation or conjecture or innuendo but i will say this if you're watching that game on monday night uh what happened to demar hamlin struck me a little different um as a brotherhood in the nfl when injuries happen when we know injuries are a part of the game i've seen guys suffer acls and achilles tear but I've never seen anybody have to be revived and fight for their life on the field. So they struck me a little differently because I remember seeing my brother paralyzed on the field temporarily, and he was able to regain focus. Um, Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, uh, and and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down, but I didn't want it. Well, yeah. Time out, time out. I'm not going to take it down because okay. I stand but, by okay. what I tweeted. Skip, let me okay. finish. Let me, All right, okay. Go ahead. No, you go. Go ahead, let's go, Jan. Okay. I mean, I cannot even get through a monologue without you interrupting okay. me. Well, you could have came back. Skip, well, I thought, Skip, just let out. I didn't I, know I you were going to bring up. No, I was just going to say, Skip, I didn't want to yesterday to get into a situation where DeMar Hamlin was the issue. We should have been talking about him and not get into okay. your not get into your, uh, uh, your tweet. That's what I was going to do. But you can't even let me finish my opening monologue without you interrupting, okay? I was under the impression you weren't going to bring this up because nobody here had a problem with no, that tweet. no. Clearly, the bosses wanted you to offer explanation. So clearly, no, they did problem. not have. The, nobody. Let's go, Jay. That's just to me. That reads like every episode of that show. Yeah. Where it's, it's, it was like maybe Shannon Sharp like legitimately like upset by what Skip tweeted. I don't even know what he tweeted. Um, it's probably something stupid. <laughs> but I'd like. Honestly, no one wants to hear this. It's the advice that sucks. It's like when people talk about news resolution and they want to mm-hmm. lose weight and they're like, I want to go on this diet. It sucks because the real advice is like, oh, well, just like, if you change your lifestyle, you can't just like go on whatever for three months and that's it. Yeah. It's the same advice with that stuff. It's like, oh, these people suck. They're terrible. It's like, don't quote tweet it. Don't do anything. Right. Don't interact with it. Like, that's that's the honest answer, which is no fun and no one wants to hear it, but that's the truth. Like, yeah. if you want those people to not have their job anymore stop engaging with the content because they know i guarantee you that is already going to probably be the most watched clip of that show for this entire year unless something even worse happens you like it's just i don't know it's like it doesn't ring any different to me than any other episode of that show Mm -hmm. where it's all scripted outrage and nonsense i feel like every time it's shannon getting upset at something skip does and skip like defending himself i it's just what it is. That's why you should subscribe to this show. <laughs> right. We don't do the debate bullshit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this Eagles game, it's one of those things that uh, I guess we didn't see coming uh, with just the circumstances and everything. So we'll see how that all plays out on Sunday um, as it's Eagles-Giants for a whole lot. 
you know, it's either you're the one seed, you win the division, a, a shirts and hats type of game going into the playoffs and going into the bye week, or you're gearing up to to go down to Tampa and play the Buccaneers for the second straight postseason. That's tough. Um, not sure I'd want to be, you know, like the, the horrors for them of uh, going back to Tampa Bay too. Honestly, for both the Eagles and the Cowboys. Yeah, it like Cowboys have not been successful against the Buccaneers in the last two seasons in the opening weekend in the NFL, and yeah, I think the Eagles would not enjoy the you know going back. I think too again like we've talked about this. The Eagles still have a lot to prove. Yeah, you know, like, mm-hmm. as good as they've been this year, like it's one thing to be good in the regular season, it's another thing to be good in the postseason. And you know this coaching staff's like first foray into. The postseason last year was not good at all, um, and I think it's reasonable to be a little concerned, you know, like about that still. Who know? do you think has more to prove in the postseason? Is it the players or the coaches? The players always get more of the – like if, if the Eagles lose and Jalen Hurts is playing, it'll be much more about Jalen Hurts For than sure. it ever will be about the coaches. Um, Me personally, I think it's the two coordinators. Yeah, like Gannon especially I think is under – like reasonable criticism um yeah i just think any time that you don't succeed in the playoffs typically the quarterback is the one that's going to like catch the most blame for that unless it's something you like Mm -hmm. egregious where like everyone can see that this is not working as it should but yeah typically it's going to fall on the on the quarterback and i think the coordinators will be and should be under more of like a magnifying glass this postseason because and i think shane steichen was catching a lot of heat Rightfully so, after that Saints game, because only scoring 10 points is crazy. Um, and some of the you know play-calling choices in that game were pretty poor. But those two guys, over the last two years now, have been mentioned in like the new head coach hirings and you know being candidates for coaches. And uh, you know there's going to be a bunch of head coaching openings, I would assume, uh, after this week when you know Black Monday rolls around. Um, and those two guys are always in the mix, so I think they have a lot to prove this postseason. If they want to take that next step to being head coaches in this league, I think they're going to be under a, a pretty severe microscope, um, not only just from Eagles fans, but from like other teams that are potentially considering them as you know their next head coach. Yeah, def- uh, you know, postseason is the time where you really earn the paycheck. That, wasn't that like Peyton Manning that always said that? Like mm-hmm. that's where you like really earn the money. Um, and it's true, you know, like if, if you're not winning then, it's cool if you go, if you win like 12, 13 games in the regular season, but if that's not being consolidated into, you know, NFC Championship games and Super Bowl appearances, like it's ultimately not, not the, 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 the true goal here, you know, like the, the aim for the Eagles for the rest of the season is to win a Super Bowl. Um, and yeah, I mean, the NFC too has, has taken, you know, dips and turns over the last few weeks and... Uh, it's still, you know, like now the Packers all of a sudden are like rejuvenated <laughs> and look good. Like the Lions, I, I don't know. People, I don't think people would be excited to play the Detroit Lions, right. you know, like and how good that offense has been. Um, and then, yeah, the the 49ers still look very resilient. Maybe not the best defensive performance this past week against the Raiders, but still that Brock Purdy can perform well in like a, a high scoring game. And the you know, Cowboys are still still good. You Tom know, Brady doing these comebacks. Tom too. Brady is like again, like he like the Buccaneers find a way somehow to like win these ugly ass games. So I don't know. You know, it's uh it's I still think the Eagles, 49ers, and Cowboys are the the three at the top. Like that's that's the tier at the top of the the conference for me. Everyone else is sort of however you want to categorize them, but um, those are the three that I would be expecting to. Uh, Two of those three should be in the in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, would be my guess. And the Giants are in the mix too. They clinched postseason spot already. Giant, so. Yeah, Giants can't forget about the Giants. But um, also, shout out to everybody. Like, you know, we can we can talk about how shitty the world is and everything. But I think the Demar Hamlin uh, GoFundMe for his toy drive spoke volumes about how cool people can be together, coming together for like a common cause, and like over six and a half million dollars now has come in. Um, GoFundMe said at like the peak on Monday night, like they were taking in five thousand dollars a minute, which is crazy. So shout out to everybody who, uh, you know, came together for that. That's really really cool. Um, and then uh, you know, 
speaking of the Giants being the opponent this week, uh, did you see Kayvon Thibodeau just like doubling down on his uh, celebration decision? Sometimes you you just need someone in your ear to tell you to be like, yeah, that was dumb. I like. Also, claiming to not know who Jeff Saturday is is like, come on, buddy. There's no way that you have like. I know that he's younger than us, right. obviously, but um, he's 21. That is definitely old enough to have. Jeff Saturday was like a staple player in the league for yeah. over a decade. He's like a borderline, if not already, Hall of Famer. Yeah, like he's one of the best. Like, centers. and he was on ESPN. You're telling me you like, didn't watch you, ESPN uh, at Oregon, Kayvon? It's like he was playing all the time with Peyton Manning. Like, yeah. you know who Jeff... He was, like, the most famous, like, offensive lineman of my lifetime. Yeah. Like, the only other person I can think, only other lineman that I can think, and I think that's mostly just because he was an eagle and then became involved in politics, was John Runyon. Yeah. It's the only other, like, lineman that's been as, like, prevalent. You know, defensive linemen, you don't get a lot of praise because right. they, they have the big, like, highlight plays and stuff. But, um Shut up. <laughs> like you, you know who Jeff Saturday is. And it's like, come what on, What a buddy. weird thing to lie yeah, about. I don't know who he, Who's the gatekeeper on celebrating? Then, then we'll talk. Yeah, okay. There's buddy, a difference. Like, okay, so there's a difference between celebrating and, like, it's, like, shocking how long this celebration went on. <laughs> it feels like... It was like a two-act play. It feels like those those videos that you get sometimes where it's like two seconds, but it loops perfectly. Yeah. But it was actually like, it was just like 12 seconds of him. And like, no one stopped him either. No, no they're all like, hovered around him. <laughs> and it's like one thing to have done that. And like, maybe you could just sell it as I got caught up in the moment. Like he also looked over at him and then continued to go like, yeah, his more. arm hit him <laughs> and he saw him like clearly writing. And then he goes on the sideline, does the sleeping, yeah. you know, go to sleep thing. And it's like, you Come didn't on, know man. he was hurt. Get out of my like, face. It's like, shut up. <laughs> like, why are you lying about something so obvious? <laughs> that was un- like he did like six snow angels. Looks over, sees Nick Foles like seizing pretty much, and then just continues to do like four more. Like, grow up a little bit, pal. Um, and I just hope the Eagles like use that as uh, motivation for Super Bowl MVP getting. His grave danced on pretty much, uh, you know, seething in pain while a rookie just, like, you know, decides to overdo a celebration. Um, But, Matt, the Philadelphia Phillies, they have officially signed Craig Kimbrell to a one-year deal. uh, And Oscar Budajan, the Phillies' uh, Spanish radio play-by-play announcer, I don't know if the Phillies' official account tweeted this or not, but Oscar tweeted that uh, to make room for Kimbrell, Surprisingly, Francisco Morales was designated for assignment. Um, we saw him a bit last year out of the bullpen, uh, especially in September. But Kimbrel officially a Philly. Yeah, and that feels like uh, the team pretty solidified because if you if you can believe this, uh, pitchers and catchers report in forty days. I think. Yep. So we are we are one Lent away <laughs> from. <laughs> we are one Tom Brady retirement. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> How many Scaramucci's was that? That's that three three Scaramucci's? Man. Um have you seen the uh I think, I think How many Liz Truss uh <laughs> I think it's like two Liz Trusses. The um I think this year more than any, I've seen it the people complaining about the empty ballots for the Hall of Fame for baseball on Twitter and, and social media where, you know, there's the one guy, I forget his name, so I apologize, but he tweets out like everybody's ballot to like show who voted for who. And there were a couple like blank ballots, but they chose to remain anonymous. And it's like, why do you even have a vote? I, this is like the most obscene thing. I can think of it too with the, um, the NBA, like there's these random people that get like votes for MVP and all the, uh, the all NBA teams. Hall of Fame's even worse. Cause like, you know, you have a limited run, you know, and, and you have to hit a certain threshold to be put in. And I just, you know, it's like the highest honor you could possibly receive. You have to be like literally immortalized forever mm-hmm. in this like shrine to your sport. Um, yeah, it's just, I, it's so annoying when these, these people don't take it seriously, but then also like pretend like they are taking it seriously. You know, like it's like, you're very clearly not interested in actually this, like doing this properly. Right. So you shouldn't have the capacity there needs to be like a review board yes i think like every every three years you should get like a vote and it's like good for three years and then you have to like essentially like 
a panel of whoever, I, I don't know what the panel would look like exactly, but sits down and, like, looks at your voting record or, like, looks at, like, your tweets to, like, see if you have, like, any outrageous bias or something. But, like, yeah, you're good to vote again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, I don't know. I, I just don't see why, like, I, I just don't see why these, like, dinosaurs, especially, too. There's a lot right. of, like, older guys that, that get these votes. And fair enough, like, they put their work in, but it's also, like, come on, man. Like, some, some of these decisions people make about, I think, too, like, it places so much power in, like, an established class of, like, baseball writers and, and those types of people. And it's like, they don't speak for everyone. Like, Barry Bonds isn't going to be in the Hall of Fame. Until the Veterans Committee puts him in. Like, but that's when he's dead. And that's, like, he is formative to my yeah. baseball fandom. And, like, it's not going to, it's it, you know, it's not going to be in for wh- however long. You know, like... Whether you like him or don't, or, you know, like, obviously, like, there's controversy surrounding Barry Bonds. should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, I'm sorry. You cannot tell the story of baseball in the 21st century without Barry Bonds. Like, it's an, it's impossible to escape um, all the steroid era guys. Like, how do you how could you possibly separate them? Yeah. I don't know. I just I think it's... And I this year's dumb. ballot, too. Like, these are, like, formative year guys for us right. in terms of baseball, especially, like, across the board. So, like, this year's ballot... Scott Rowland should be a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Todd Helton, Hall of Famer. Billy Wagner, Andrew Jones, Gary Sheffield, Alex Rodriguez, Jeff Kent, shout out Survivor, uh, Manny Ramirez, Omar Vizquel, Andy Pettit, Jimmy Rollins, Bobby Abreu, Mark Burley, Tory Hunter, Carlos Beltran, John Lackey, Jared Weaver, Jacoby Ellsbury, Matt Kane, Johnny Peralta, Jason Wirth, J.J. Hardy, Mike Napoli, Bronson Arroyo, R.A. Dickey, Francisco Rodriguez, a.k.a. K-Rod, uh, Andre Ethier, and Houston Street. Yeah. I think there's quite a few names. That I, I think you can make the <laughs> argument for, like, almost every single one of those guys. Yeah. Um, a lot of buzz around Jimmy Rollins, though, which is fun. Yeah, and uh, should. Yeah. <laughs> In my opinion, should be the second year on the ballot, um, there's, like, this... Hall of Fame monitor from Bill James, which measures attempts to determine how likely a player is to be elected. It's a rough scale with over 100 being likely and under 100 being less likely. Uh, his scale has Jimmy Rollins as 121. So that's promising, I would say. Um, and it's the guys that are, you know, close to or around that are. Scott Rowland at 99, Todd Helton, Billy Wagner, Andrew Jones, Gary Sheffield, Alex Rodriguez, Jeff Kent, Manny Ramirez, Omar Vizquel, Andy Pettit, Jimmy Rollins, Bobby Abreu. Weird how 95. they're going to vote Andy Pettit in. Yeah. You know, talk about steroid use. And Carlos Beltran. <laughs> Is it because he apologized and is white? Is that yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Um, so, I mean, it's weird, too, like, with the Hall of Fame, like, I can't remember a class that's had, like, more than, like, five people at a time. Yeah. Especially with baseball. Like, I know the NFL does, like, a pretty decent amount every year. Um, but baseball, it feels like it's like, oh, here's one guy getting elected this year. It's so stupid. It's so damn annoying. <laughs> it's- like, there needs to be a, a It's revamp. so funny, too, because there's, like, in the course of a season, you can see, like, 60 people play for your team. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's like, well, two guys got in the Hall of Fame this year. Like, shut up. It's unbelievable. There needs to be a complete, like, overhaul of the voting process. The Basketball Hall of Fame, which is the Basketball Hall of Fame, not just the NBA yeah. Hall of Fame, lets in, like, double digits. Yeah. <laughs> like, with regularity. Every year. Every year. Without fail. And it's like, and you're telling me, like, a 15-man roster in that league, and there's 40 in baseball. And again, you're seeing... Dozens and dozens of players, guys you'll never hear of again, play for your baseball team, and you can only you can only pick up two that are worthy. <laughs> Shut up, God uh, Almighty! Especially a sport that like loves to like steep in like history of like yes. just like random dudes. Like, like what are we doing? <laughs> like, it's like, come on. Uh, would love to see Jimmy get elected. Um, because he deserves it. He was an MVP, won a World Series, went to multiple World Series, uh, was one of the few players in MLB history to be in the 30-30 club, and uh, he's the Phillies' all-time hits leader. Like, he leads a, a Major League Baseball franchise in hits. Like, 
that should be warranted enough with those stats alone. Plus, he put up Hall of Fame numbers in his career. Um, and, I mean, Jimmy's war for his career, 47.6. It's pretty damn good when you look at it. Played in almost 2,300 games. So, get Jimmy Rollins in the Hall of Fame. Um, Matt, the Philadelphia 76ers segment brought to you by our friends at Kenwood Beer. Uh, when you're going down to the Wells Fargo Center, you can get big Kennys now at the Wells Fargo Center. So crack open a nice cold Kenny when you're watching the Sixers, the Flyers, the Wings, whose home opener is in uh, 10 days, or uh, Villanova basketball when they're down there. You can crack open a big Kenny there or use the all-new and improved Kenny tracker at KenwoodBeer.com to see who's got Kennys on tap in the Philadelphia area. you got to be 21 or older to do so, and of course, please drink responsibly. Joel Embiid ruled out tonight as we uh, are live right now on Wednesday after playing 16 straight games. Uh, ruled out tonight against the Pacers. Doc Rivers guaranteeing an Eagles Super Bowl appearance. Great. <laughs> and Tyrese Maxey is back. Can we just like put Doc Rivers in one of those uh, one of those like protective chambers though, where like you can't hear anything and they can't hear you? Like you just why is he why is he saying that? What did we do to him? <laughs> it's already bad enough he's ruining the Sixers' chances. Like, what do you have mm-hmm. to spread, spread the, the nastiness around? But um, yeah, Embiid's rested tonight with some uh, left foot soreness. So prayers up for him. Um, I mean, kind of the kind of the same of, of where we've been at. You know, they they dropped two last week and you know kind of rebound nicely and they're getting into like a, a softer part of the schedule, of course. But um, you know, Embiid has been putting on a show the the last few weeks. A lot of like the stars of this league have mm-hmm. been, you know, it's, <laughs> it's weird. Like we've gotten like, you know, like scores that you would expect maybe like maybe like once a month you get like maybe once or twice a month you get these types of games. Like you're getting it like back to back to back to back yeah. in one night. You know, you're having Doncic and and Giannis and Embiid and Booker and Clay and Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. Like getting all these guys just like go absolutely insane. You know, in one night, you know, and, and and multiple nights too. Like this has been a a theme over the last few weeks in the NBA. It's been exciting in some ways. Um, I guess I don't know that many people that like defense in the NBA, especially in like December and January. Yeah. But um, defensively, teams have not been uh, <laughs> not been at their best this year. No, uh, but I think the those types of like standout games from your superstars, like that's good for the league. Absolutely, like it's 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 exciting, like and it becomes a, a competition within itself, right? Of like who's putting up the craziest number. Like Yoke could just put up like insane stat lines this year. Like it's always, you're always in good company if you're like, um, had, that hasn't been done since Wilt Chamberlain. You know, like that's when it's like, oh man, this is like, or like the few times that we've had, like Wilt never even did this. Like yeah. that's the ultimate. Like Donovan Mitchell's was the first stat line in NBA history of seventy plus points and ten plus something yeah it's either like rebounds or, or something crazy um first time in nba history and like i feel like we've gotten those a lot this year too like first time in nba history type uh performances which is pretty cool uh end of the first quarter just about six trail by one against the pacers but uh on monday's show Pitts and i went through the sixers january schedule and it is a bit more manageable i would say than earlier parts of the year you got a, a bit of a lighter schedule. You do have that West Coast road trip uh, in a week and a half or so against the Jazz, Lakers, Clippers, Trailblazers, and Kings. Um, so that'll be, you know, I think that'll be a test just in terms of being on the road for that long on the West Coast and that type of stuff. And then you come home uh, four days later after playing the Kings to play the Nets, who have been somehow just on fire. Yeah. Um the, the January schedule, like you said, is definitely a little bit smoother than, than where we've been at and long road trip. But, you know, I, I think Maxi being back is, is a huge boost to this team. And yeah, we've seen him start to, like, reintegrate slowly and uh, look pretty good so far. So that's that's encouraging and I think is a, is going to be a big, big boost for them because, you know, again, you know, Maxi, Harden, and Beat have not seen the court together a lot this year, uh, a shockingly low <laughs> amount. So it's, it's going to be nice to have those all. Uh, back again, like your three best players actually playing basketball. It turns out it's going to be pretty cool. Um, you know, and I, I think too, like the East is still open. Yeah, the Celtics have cooled off a little bit from their like really hot start. You know, so somehow 
the top seeds in the East are still within. It's so strange this like Sixer season and how bad it's felt at times. Yet it's still like I don't know. It's still kind of all there for them, you know. Like it's three still, games back of the one seed, which is just dumb. You, like if eh, it's bizarre to think about that, you know, especially the way the Sixer season started. And I think if you like took the pulse of people they would say that this team is maybe like two or three games above 500 you know like it's just has not felt like a team that's um, that eight game win streak did wonders for that team right exactly you know but yeah before that this team was kind of listless yeah so the nets have won 12 games in a row yeah they've been very good um i think ben simmons has not made a free throw during those 12 games but yeah they've what you do know, you know they've started to figure out turns out kevin durant good player who knew who would have thunk <laughs> who knew <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, and then, uh, that Warriors game the other night too, when they go to overtime against the Hawks, Dante DiVincenzo, born to be a warrior. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just absolute dart of a shot to send it to overtime. Um, so we'll see what happens with the Sixers, you know, slowly, uh, having them seep back into our lives. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, Carter Hart got activated today. Cool. <laughs> um, I just think that with the Flyers, I know we don't talk about them a lot for everybody who is wondering why we don't. Well, one, they stink. Two, I just think they need to finally embrace the tank this year. Like, you are clearly a bad hockey team. Just go all in on the tank. The problem is, is there's there's not much to, like there's not much to talk about with this team. Like, what do you yeah. say about a team that is so bad? There's no personality. That has that has like no stars in it, uh, that sucks and that is directionless. I you know like what do you? <laughs> I don't know, because it, it you're just gonna end up sounding like a broken record every week when you talk about them and how terrible they are, and how they have no organizational focus right now, and are horribly mismanaged and have been. This isn't news either. Like this is not a new thread with this team. Like they're just straight up terrible. So what you get? <laughs> this is what you get when you sign Tony D'Angelo too. Yeah. <laughs> to I mean, yourself. Somehow they've won three games in a row, but like they won three games to start the season. Yeah. You know? Like they're not a good hockey team. Like there's gonna be a you know, a plethora of talent allegedly in this upcoming draft too. Like not that the Flyers are notorious for being able to pick them. Um but like just embrace the tank. Just like demolish this team. They're not that good. Like you said, there's no stars on this team whatsoever. You get rid of the the bigger contracts when you can. Allegedly, James Van Riemsdyk is on the uh, on the trade block. That's gonna clear up money for you. Let him go to a contender, and then you kind of just restart. You, you gotta you gotta hit the reset button on this team. Like they went too long, um, trying to just like recycle what they had and and try to fit pieces into. Spots where they, they probably shouldn't have tried to fit them into. And, you know, being a competitive hockey team isn't going to win you champion. You have to be elite in the NHL if you want to win. And just staying competitive like they did for the entire 2010s, it, it probably set this team back a decade. Yeah, and I mean, having, like, bad front office management, too. When you, the people up front are making bad decisions and not uh, making the right calls and, and the right choices. Like, that's... That's where it gets sketchy, and this is like across every sport. This is mm-hmm. not hockey specific, but um, you know, too, like you had ownership change during that time, um, at least in terms of like who was making this decisions. Right, right? that the team itself wasn't sold necessarily, but you know that that is always a, a thing that can spend the team in a, a different direction. And yeah, I mean, they've just again they've been rudderless for the last few years. Like where, um, you know, I. What what faith do you have in like Chuck Fletcher to, to like fix this problem? Like for me, it's, it's zero, and it's not even just him, right? Like it's it's a it's it's a large like scope of of issues with this team. So yeah, I mean, there's a, like like we've said for years now. Like it just seems like there's no direction with the Flyers, and they just try to you know make the best of what they have and, and see if they can be competitive. But This is the team that was trading away top picks last year yeah. to, like, acquire talent. And it's like you're For guys here. that have not done a thing for them. <laughs> like, I just I don't understand it. Um, So that's a bummer. Um, But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Union, Matt, um, Gazdag, switching up the number. Wearing number 10. 
well, this is just the new number 10 with the new jersey that's coming out. Yeah. Um, Union giving that away now. Um, former Union, uh, Brad Knight, and also announced his retirement today. Um, it's crazy, like, perspective-wise, because, like, 2007, which is when he started his career, like, I feel like me personally just being casual in the Union, not being around, like, MLS was, like, not even in my brain stratosphere. 2007, it wasn't for me, though that was the the Beckham year, uh, which was a, a big shakeup for the sport uh, in America, at least. But yeah, it's like you know MLS even five years ago is just a, a different, different league, a different type of, uh, of of structure and system. You look at the way the teams are run now; it's it's much different, much better. Um, especially 2007 is <laughs> it's a much different time. But guys, that being back is is good. Um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't fully expect that, you know, when we're coming to the end of the season, really felt like a guy that it's going to be hard for the union to, to keep. Um, but that's, that's huge. That's just as good as signing like a new, you know, it's so important when you're a good team to keep the core together. Like it's just a challenge to do that. Um, especially in this sport where, you know, your best players are typically going to be poached by, and especially in MLS, right? Like you're not the dominant league, you know, the players are always going to maybe be looking to move abroad to, to more challenging leagues where they get more you know, kind of acclaim and, and wider viewership and all that. Like, I just think, uh, I think it's, it's a big boost to them to, to have resigned him. Yeah. And then, uh, Jim Curtin, uh, today it was announced from the Delco times. He was named the 2022, uh, Delaware County sports figure of the year. Uh, quote here, Subaru park has become one of the toughest places in MLS for any team to come to and play because we have such great fans. The Delco area is a huge part of that. Uh, so congrats to Coach Curtin on that uh, announcement. And then obviously the union also big time in solidarity with the Buffalo Bills and DeMar Hamlin due to uh, Tim McDermott being in the front office for the union, his brother, Sean McDermott. So um, very you know nice gestures from the union, lighting up their stadium blue, switched up their profile pictures on social media to, kind of show you know their support with the bills and everything um just one of the the classier organizations i would say um in all sports i think the union do a fantastic job um and then also with gazdag they marked him as a designated player which i think is for the is that for the draft what happened? guys that they declared uh gazdag a designated player yeah so Designated players are you get three in MLS, um, which you're allowed to go over the salary cap to sign them. Uh, so, yeah. So he switched his number from six to ten, and he is uh, guaranteed through 2025 with an option for 2026. So here for the long haul too. Yes, which is big time for for revenge season. Um, so hopefully Union get back at it um, relatively soon. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there, uh, uh, late February, we're back. So, so big time stuff there. Um, obviously, big time stuff. Big time stuff. <laughs> uh, Survivor in the off season. I've just been going on a deep dive on YouTube of just watching this one channel. Um, I think it's called like Once Upon an Island or something like that. He does like these like secret like Easter egg type things from every single Survivor season, and I've just been going down this rabbit hole of like finding out information that like I had no clue about. When yeah. I was watching those seasons, so that's been a ton of fun. Like Rupert was like on a, um, it was like an Israeli version of Survivor, and he was a a reward for a tribe. Yeah, he kind of just came out and like yeah. yelled, and uh, they were like, "What?" <laughs> and then like tried to make fire, couldn't do. He's like, "This was harder than I remember." <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and then uh, just a bunch of just crazy stuff, like. Uh, I think we talked about it last week with the one, uh, I think her name's Carol. She got stripped of her gold medal for doing steroids mm. uh, from the Olympics. And then uh, this past weekend, too, Pat Pitts was at the Patriots game, and Rob, Boston Rob, Amber, and Noel were all at the game together. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and I sent it to my buddy who uh, is from Boston. He works for the PLL, and he, he's a big survivor guy. And he was like, there was no way the Patriots were losing in front of these three goats. <laughs> Certainly not. Oh, uh, I also found Gabler on Twitter, which was a surprise. Didn't think he would be on Twitter. That's shocking um, to me. 
so that was a, a fun little stumble this past weekend too. But Survivor uh, on ice for about two months now. But uh, we'll be back in the swing of things probably in February. And, uh, you know, we're heading into year five of Underground Sports Philadelphia, which is very exciting. And the Underground Sports Philadelphia Hall of Fame voting will be live pretty, pretty soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, as February 7th is just about a month away. So stay tuned for all of that. Got some big project announcements coming up as well. And uh, it's all because of you guys. So make sure you're following us at Underground PHI on Twitter, Instagram. Follow Matt on Twitter at Matt Castorina. Follow me at KBIZZL311. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We're there. Leave those five star reviews on Apple and Spotify does go a long way for the show continuing to grow, helping more people find the show and uh, just taking this thing to the next level of where we want to bring it in 2023 and beyond. Also want to make an announcement that we did on the get in the hole podcast, but we do have a new co-host with Steven McAvoy, Jake Dippold uh, also known as pitch and chips on social media. He does like baseball golf crossover content. So make sure you guys go follow him at pitch and underscore chips wherever you uh, are on the socials and then at jacob underscore dippled on twitter uh welcome to the family my man uh very excited for that next chapter of the getting the whole podcast with those two and uh make sure you guys subscribe to the underground sports philadelphia youtube channel it's where you get full video episodes of every single podcast uh you get live streams original content shorts all that good stuff we're planning on More clips, more good stuff coming to the YouTube channel this year. Uh, So YouTube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. That's where all the good stuff is going to be video-wise. And a big thank you to our sponsors who make this show happen. Main Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland. And, of course, guys, go get your merch. PHI Apparel Company, Uh, they're the best in the game. Our new hoodies will be dropping thursday not sure what time yet but they'll be live on thursday phi apparel.co and use code underground to get 10 percent off any and all merch orders from our friends at phi apparel company uh big shout out to them for being the best in the game with our merch and uh we'll be back sunday night probably maybe monday morning myself and pat pitts doing the, the nfl recap pat pitts power rankings which have been absolutely hilarious um Hopefully talking about the Eagles going to the postseason. Then we'll be back here live on Wednesday, myself and Matt, breaking it all down, getting ready for the playoffs as the NFL playoffs are here. And uh, it's going to be one hell of a ride. So let's keep this thing rolling. Happy New Year to everybody. And this has been episode number 496 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. For Matt, I'm KB. Till next time, we are getting the heck out of here and signing off. Peace.